Good morning. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for worship this morning. I'm Pastor Lauren, and I do have a few announcements to bring to your attention this morning. As you can see, we will be celebrating communion later in worship today. Um, we celebrate by passing the elements on the trays. If you would prefer a different way of celebrating, like a brown bag, if you can wave to one of the ushers, they'll be glad to help you with that. And if you are worshiping with us online, um, at any time, feel free to find something that represents the bread and the cup to you, wherever you are, so that you can celebrate with us at that time. A couple of other announcements. Next Sunday, we will have our annual meeting following worship. Um, this meeting is for the purpose of receiving the 2022 annual report of voting on the 2023 budget and for we have one um, officer position that needs to be voted on at that meeting as well um, so i hope that you can join us for a few moments we plan for it to be a short meeting following worship next sunday february 12th um, we do have a few sign up sheets downstairs one is for coffee fellowship treats if you are able to choose a Sunday to sign up to bring treats for fellowship, that would be a big help. I saw a lot of open spaces on that sign up. And we would like to invite a couple of folks to join our coffee making team. Um, Pat Norch was doing a lot of the coffee making and at this time she's not able to, to do so. So if you could join us in that, that would be a huge help. We can train you in how to make the coffee. So you can see myself or Shannon, if that's okay, after worship today, if you are interested in helping with making coffee. Um, a few weeks ago, we celebrated the end of our snow gear drive for the kids at Capron Elementary, and we have another opportunity to support Capron Elementary in just a couple of weeks. On Thursday, February 16th, we have the chance to bring a meal to the faculty staff. Um, so for their, it's their parent-teacher conference night, so we will feed them so they can head into those conferences um, well-nurtured and well-prepared. Um, there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board downstairs. See me if you have any questions at all about that. We need all kinds of things, casseroles, salads, bread, drinks, so there's something for everybody. Um, but see me if you have any questions about that and help us help Capron. Um, today after worship, the deacons will meet and next Sunday after worship, the youth group will meet. Um, and next Sunday, we will continue our Sunday school class on perspectives on Genesis. I'll be leading the class from 9 to 9.30 in the library on Cain and Abel. And I'll, I'll try to um, follow in April's good footsteps. She led our class this morning, and it was wonderful. I hope you can join us for Sunday school. Are there any other announcements or prayer requests this morning? It's friends, um, prayers for the family of Laura Sheridan. Laura passed away from cancer this week. Um, those are friends of, of Brenda's. So we'll be praying for the, the loved ones of Laura Sheridan. Sorry to hear about that. Thank you for sharing. Okay, yes, yes, got you. Yes, thank you. Another sign-up sheet downstairs is for youth group lunches, and we are grateful for those who have um, provided those lunches so far or signed up to provide them, but there are a couple more sign-up sheets for this spring. So, yes, thank you. Wow. Prayers for the family of Ted Zirith. Zirith. Um, Ed served on the school board with him. Ted was, at the time of his passing, the longest serving school board member in the state of Illinois. Um, so certainly a life of service there. Um, so prayers for all of Ted's loved ones as he passed away. Thank you. Are there are other announcements or prayer requests this morning. Let's pause for a word of prayer. God of mystery and judgment, God who has made us to be salt and light, 
in a tasteless, shadowed world. Guide us in this time of worship. Grant us understanding and spiritual discernment so that others may see your good works through us to give you the glory and be moved to serve you. We pray especially for those who are grieving this day, especially for the families of Laura and Ted. And we pray that all of their loved ones and all who are grieving will know the power of your presence. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. We are called to bring a new understanding of God, that God so loves the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are called to bring a new hope in God, that God gives us new life. We are the light of the world. We are called to follow the commandments and the law. Come, let us be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Come, let us love one another with the love of God. Let us join together in our love of God to worship and follow Jesus. Let's continue standing and sing together hymn number 37, Let All Things Now Living. light of the world in the sparkle of the snowflake we see your beauty even in the cold of winter your creation amazes us we praise you for blessing the world with such beauty and giving us a place within it just as months of winter renew creation for springtime growth renew us with your spirit in this time of worship to grow in faithfulness and service trusting in God's tender mercy let us confess our sin to God with one another. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God, your light exposes our sin, but bathes us in grace. In the light of your love, we see ourselves truly. We hold in your light all in us that is hurting and hurtful. Release our judgment of ourselves and one another and ask your healing and forgiveness. Hear us, Lord, as we silently confess our sins. Amen. Together, let's say the assurance of pardon. 
Christ is the firstborn of creation, shining a redeeming light to the darkness of human sin. In him we are forgiven, restored and made new. Thanks be to God, we can make a fresh start today. Jesus sent forth his disciples with a word of peace. We too are bearers of that peace as we greet others in Christ's name. Let's share the peace with one another saying, may the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, your mysteries surround and astound us each day. Send your Holy Spirit to open the mysteries of Scripture for us so that our understanding is refreshed and courage to follow Christ renewed. Amen. Today, today's first scripture reading is Matthew 5, verses 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. can frame no sound Savior be my face true ground when my eyes no longer see may thy spirit rest in thee when my ears no longer Spirit, know thee near, Lord, I trust my soul to thee, may thy love abide in me. Oh, send thy guidance from above, oh Lord, hear them as we humbly
Amen. My husband, Ron, will be doing the children's moment today. Will Ron and the children come forward? You and me again. Is that okay? Oh, we got another one. All right. They said to bring children up. Ed, you want to come up and join us too? <laughs> Just thought of that. How's everybody doing today? Good. You know, I got really excited because I got told that I was going to get to bring a treat today. And we we're going to have a taste test. And I'm thinking, oh, that's cool, man. We're going to have a cookie or candy or chocolate or something. And then I was... Huh? You like cookies? You know what? I like cookies too. And my favorite kind is downstairs. I already had one. <laughs> but you know what? Then I found out that the treat I was bringing today was going to be a cracker. Can you believe that? A cracker? Oh, man. So here I've got bags full of crackers. Please take one. Don't open it yet, okay? Because you know what? I got another friend over here that I'm going to watch you take. Okay? Now those, those are marked an X. See the X on them? Okay. X marks the spot, doesn't it? You bet. Now I'm going to give you one that's got a Y on it. Thank you. Okay? Good. Don't get it. There you go. All right. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to open up the one that has the X on it. Hmm. Got it. Oh. And, and, and open it up, and I want you to take a test of that cracker. It's in another bag. It's in another bag, yes it is. Take a bite of it. It's not poison, it's really not. <laughs> How's it taste? Good. Kind of good. Good? Is it good? Kind of, kind of good. That's the kind of answer I'm looking for. You, you like mats and mats up, right? Yeah, I know, I know. You, you know, that's the thing about crackers. You know, they're not always the most best delicious. tasteful thing. Huh? Delicious. Delicious. Oh, now he says delicious. Okay, now I want you to take out the other bag, and I want you to take a taste of that one. That's good. I think that's good. Oh, pretty something you can. <laughs> Take a taste of that one. I think it's going to taste the same. It's saltier. It's saltier. Very good. Can you taste the difference in it? Which one do you like better? The one with the salt on it? Yeah, kind of. You know, if you think about it, a lot of things taste better with salt. Salt is kind of like a flavorful thing, right? How about french fries? You guys like french fries? You don't, you don't like french fries? What kind of a kid is this? I thought everybody liked french fries. Oh my goodness gracious. You guys like french fries, don't you? Oh man. Now what if you, if you had french fries, if you had your choice between having french fries with salt on it or no salt, which would you pick? Salt. Salt. Yeah, all right. How about, do you like eggs? You like eggs. Okay, you like eggs. I'm going to talk to you this time. If you like, if you like eggs, if you would have an egg, would you rather have salt or would you have nothing? Nothing? I would, I would have kind of the salt. You like salt. Okay, well salt does a lot of things. Like I said, it gives you flavor. Now the thing is that I know that salt and pepper and all these other things, they are, they are ingredients that, that can really, really make something taste a whole lot better. And in today's scripture that was read, that's what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus wants us to be the salt of the earth. He wants us to have salt inside of us, and he wants us to go out into the world and make the world a better place. Because if we do that, and we are the salt of the earth, guess what? We're going to take people, and we're going to make people want to come to church and believe in Jesus, and they are going to become the salt of the earth, just like you. That's what he wants us to do. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Cool. Let's, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, Thank you for being like salt on crackers for us. 
You make our lives better and happier because you are in our lives. Help us to be salt for you and bring your joy and happiness and flavor to the other people by telling them about you. Amen. Thank you for coming up here, guys. Our second scripture reading this morning is also from Matthew chapter 5, picking up where Rebecca left off with verse 16, verses 16 through 20. Listen again for God's word. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Holy wisdom, holy word. Let us pray. Eternal God, in the meditations of our hearts, may your word be known. And in the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be shown. Amen. Salt. Now that's a pretty weird thing to call anybody. Jesus called his disciples and us salt in today's scripture lesson. He said his disciples were salt for the whole world. Let's think about that for a moment. What do people use salt for? Ron said for french fries and eggs. That was one thing. And I like it, I don't know about you guys, on popcorn. My four-year-old Downs grandson and I frequent a salt therapy place in Rockford. It provides amazing holistic benefits for respiratory care and emotional health. I'll give you two more things used in Jesus' day for salt. First, salt could be used for money. Imagine money. Good, clean salt was very hard to find. You couldn't just go to a supermarket and buy a box of salt. Today, salt doesn't cost much money, but in Jesus' day, good, clean salt was so precious that people sometimes used it as money. Second, salt preserves foods. That means that if you prepare certain foods with a lot of salt on the outside, it will last a long time without any refrigeration. So it is important to have salt. It was the only way to make meat and some other foods last. A long time. So what that what does this have to do with us? Jesus' modern disciples, us, you and me. Well, we do add flavor to the world. We celebrate God's love for us, we help people who are hurt or sad, and we make them feel better. We know that God loves us because God is good. That's a really tasty thought. Christians do a lot of helping and a lot of celebrating that adds flavor to everyone's life. Jesus then says in verse 13 and 14, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. That's funny. When I hear that, I want to turn around and see who Jesus is talking to. But then I realize that Jesus is only speaking to me. And I wonder, how can that really be? Did I somehow fool Jesus into believing that I was better than I really am? No, I haven't fooled Jesus. The New Testament tells the stories of a number of people who tried to fool Jesus, and they all went away with egg on their faces. They tried to trick Jesus. They tried to trap Jesus. They tried to make Jesus think that they were better than they really were. It never, ever worked. And I know I haven't fooled Jesus. 
Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world, but not by yourself. Your Christian brothers and sisters are salt and light too, and you need them. Your personal light provides light for the whole house. But when you join your light to those of your brothers and sisters, you become the light of the world. Alone, we are just a little tiny light. Together, we're the light of the world. Christians need each other. Billy Graham said that Christians are like coals in a fire. When they cling together, they keep the flame aglow. When they separate, they die out. Today, so many people are doing so many exciting things that we must wonder how important we are by comparison. The president with a stroke of a pen, stroke of a pen in the approval of Congress, spends millions of dollars. What have we done to compare to that? Computer gurus have changed the world. What have we done that compares to that? Medical scientists extend longevity and quality of life. What have we done to compare to that? To that, Jesus says simply, you are the salt of the world. You are the light of the world. Believe it and see what happens. Individually, none of us is very salty or very bright. But as a whole church, we are a complete body of Christ. We are a real powerhouse, a force to be reckoned with. Christians are always doing good things that nobody else wants to do. Earlier in this century, most hospitals had Christian names. They are called Methodist Hospital, or Presbyterian Hospital, or Baptist Hospital, or St. Vincent's, or St. Luke's of St. Jude's Hospital for Children. They had Christian names because they were started by Christian churches. Churches started hospitals because people needed them. Nobody else was doing it because hospitals cost money, lots of it. Those were the days before medical insurance and Medicare. No one was building hospitals because there was no money in hospitals. So churches built hospitals to extend Jesus' healing ministry. It's different today, of course. Money makes a difference. Medicine has become a big money-making venture. Once hospitals start being self-supported, communities built hospitals. But in the beginning, when there was no money, churches, just like ours, built hospitals. Christians working together were indeed the light of the world. We took medical care not just to communities, but to the far corners of the earth. Those Christians were indeed the salt and light of their communities, salt and light of the world. There's no lack of opportunity. Our nation is prosperous, but there are still millions of poor people living here. Lots of people in prisons, many thousands of homeless people, a new wave of foreign immigrants and refugees trying to escape to the U.S. There are many thousands of mentally ill people, lots of foster kids who need a decent home. Our church, Willow Creek, just helped Capron School with our donation of winter snow pants, gloves, hats. The world still needs us to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Jesus reminds us that no one lights a lamp, then hides it under a bushel basket. When we light a lamp, we put it on a stand where we will illuminate our house. Jesus says, even so, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Speaking of hiding your light under a bushel, I remembered reading about Gardenia High School in California, which started a lovely tradition in 1919. Graduating seniors would vote on a favorite painting and then would buy it for the school library art collection. The tradition continued until new high school was built in 1956. 
At that point, the paintings were taken from the walls and stored in a musty old basement. They have remained in that basement for 40 years. Talk about hiding your light under a bushel. But then after 40 long years, those paintings were rescued from the basement and put on display. There are dozens of early 20th century California Impressionist oil paintings among them. For 40 years, their light was under a bushel. That's a tragedy. Now it's shining again. That's the way it should be. If you've got it, use it. Light it up. Jesus says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Note the purpose. It isn't to go get glory for ourselves. It is to give glory for our Heavenly Father. Our good works help other people to know God. People don't always appreciate good preaching. They don't always appreciate the church's effort to reach out by talking about Jesus. But people are always drawn to our good works and then see Jesus. Friends, next week is our congregational meeting. For all our members and those who attend, you will listen and witness to some of the great things God has done this past year to Willow Creek. What God is doing today and what God will do this year and beyond. Jesus humbled himself by dying on the cross and rising from the dead to preserve God's promise for eternal life and to light the way for all to see. God still needs your availability, not so much your ability, to work through each one of us serving Willow Creek and this community as the salt and the light of the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus tells us that we are the salt of the earth and light of the world. I don't think I can say that enough. Let your salt flavor and celebrate the love of Christ for all to experience. Let your light shine forth by doing small acts of love and mercy. Do them so people might see your good works. Do them so that we might give glory to the Father in heaven. Amen. Please rise as you feel able and join me in confessing what we believe using the Apostles' Creed, which is printed in your bulletins. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's remain standing and sing together hymn number 458, The World is a Lamp Unto My Feet.
God of all creation, source of every blessing, you have given us so much. As we bring our tithes and gifts to you this day, they seem so small by comparison, unless we see that we are truly called to give ourselves back to the world. May we be the salt that brings value and flavor into relationships with those around us. May we be the light that helps others find their way to your love and your care. We pray all of this in the name of your mighty God, who came to help us see that this could be. Amen. Thank you for the ways you encourage us to let our light shine. Please accept these gifts, multiply them, and make possible the vision for us to use them wisely, that we might let our good works be seen and celebrated day by day. Amen. east and west, from north and south, Christ gathers us to be at God's eternal table. Jesus calls us beloved and feeds us from his very essence. 
friends, let us feast at the table and be transformed from the inside out. The Lord be with you. So with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Jesus, light of the world, you came into the world so that we may have light. In the mystery of God, you call us to be the light in the world because life is something to be shared. With your compassion on the sick, the poor, and the outcast, you taught us what love is. In the glory of your resurrection, you demonstrated how far love will go. Love, love, life, light. You have given us purpose in the world. Holy Spirit, within us, you enable us to be the fragrance of life and the salt of the earth. You lead our hearts so that we may season the world with grace. In the same way, you gather us at this table to sustain us so that we may be salt and light in the world. Ever thankful, we pray that you would sprinkle salt on this meal we share today. May it renew our communion in Christ and with one another. With joy, we celebrate that this meal is not limited to this time and place. And so as you bind us together with the cup and the loaf, we give thanks that this table extends to every church, sanctuary, home, and group where two or three have gathered in your name. With thanksgiving, we remember how on the night before he met with death, Jesus came to the table with those he loved. He took bread and praised you, God of all creation. He broke the bread saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, broken for you. As you receive the bread, hold it so that we may partake at the same time as a sign of unity.
Christ broken just for you. And then Christ took the cup and gave thanks to you, God of all creation. Christ passed the cup among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. The blood of Christ spilled for you for the forgiveness of sin. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until Christ comes again, and Christ will come again. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, you have fed us with your light. You have salted us with your grace. 
As we reflect on these mysteries, we give you thanks for the sustenance you have provided at your table. May our light so shine before people so that you will be glorified and the whole world would join us in our praise of you. With the boldness of those who know the love of God, the light of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in the prayer you taught us to pray, praying our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of Let's rise and sing together hymn number 192, Shine, Jesus, Shine. love be like salt that makes life tasty and worthwhile. May our Christian living be a light to those who live in darkness. May our Christian communities be cities of light to be seen from far as signs that God lives and works in his people. 
And may God bless you for this mission. Go now and let the light of Christ shine on all those who live around you. Amen.